I thought I might do one more screencast just to explain um, how we can add IDs to polygons that don't have any already. Um, this is uh, really useful and often we need to have IDs with a particular key when you're producing this data. Um, hopefully in most cases polygons already will have some ID attached to them but we're getting data from lots of disparate sources or sometimes having to construct them ourselves in various um, more or less hacky ways. Um, so as an example I thought I would take uh, some of the data we looked at before, the Oberbayern polygons. Um, so I'll load that in that vector layer and use zoom to layer to bring that full screen. Um, I think I, I almost always have the OpenStreetMap the tiles on in the background just because I think it's useful to see um, as a kind of sanity check what the underlying um, uh, geography is like. But uh, to speed things up you can certainly uh, turn that off. Um, it does slow down zooming and uh, so on a little bit. Um, so if I click on identify on a few of these uh, polygons you'll see that the only keys that each one has is area and perimeter. Um, and we want to add a new one. So let's let's say we're going to add something called area ID. In that case, uh, you can do that by going to the properties for the layer um, and the fields uh, tab in there. Um, so first, you need to switch the layer into editing mode. Uh, there's a little shortcut for doing that there. Um, so I'll click that. So the layer is now editable, um, and as usual, you can see that's now marking each vertex with a red cross. Um, so one of these buttons, I think, is adding a new field. So in this case, we happen to know that the um, IDs for um, Landtagsvalkreiser in Bayern are three digits. Um, so I'm going to make the name of this field area ID, say it's a whole number, integer, um, and length of three. I think this is the, the decimal width of the value you're putting in. Um, so if I say OK there, um, that's added that uh, third uh, key for each polygon in this layer. So every feature can now have an area ID. Uh, so I click OK there. Um, what we need now is essentially the grand truth of what IDs each of these areas should have. Um, and I think I have that in a browser window um, somewhere in here. Oops. Some strange bug, which means when I shrink it too much, you get that repeated flickering effect there. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, use the attribute table to select each of these um, boundaries in turn and add the IDs there. Um, if you open the attribute table, you can see something we talked about in another podcast. Uh, the preview pane down the left, which gives you a preview expression for each of those. Um, I'm going to order them by area. Um, so we're kind of going from smallest to largest. Um, and how are we going to do this? There's just a little bit of kind of rearranging windows because you want to be able to see both areas as you go through. So if I select this one um, and see what that is corresponding in the little map here. That's 118, it looks like. So I put 118 in here. Um, a slightly confusing thing about this interface is that uh, uh, you, you tab through... Uh, oh no, actually, sorry, I won't talk about that now. Um, okay, so that's that one done. Um, remember that uh, clicking the button on the left uh, selects the area, um, and clicking on the label changes the data you're showing and editing here. Um, so basically I do two clicks for each one because I like to see get a confirmation of which one is selected uh, by seeing it in yellow there. Um, okay, so this next one uh, that's just around Munich, that looks like it's 122 there. Next one is uh, 117. And one, two, three. Uh, right, so this since isn't terribly interesting, and I basically have to do it for all of the different um, uh, polygons in this area, uh, which shouldn't take too long. But um, I'm going to just pause the uh, 
screencast here, and I'll come back to it when I've uh, done the rest of them. Okay, I've unpaused again, um, and now I've added all IDs for each of these polygons, each of these features in the layer. Um, so just to check that looks right, what I'm going to do is change the preview expression in this pane uh, to be area ID now and sort by that. Um, and actually this uh, has clearly shows that there is a mistake here, that's one of them that's still null, which I must have missed. Um, the rest of them, 109, 10, 11. Yeah, so it looks like 128 is actually missing there, so I bet that's the one that I've missed. Uh, but just to confirm that, I'm going to select that one there. Uh, I can see where it is there. Um, and yes, that's 128. That should have been. Um, so a little uh, weird uh, bug I was going to mention there is that if I've uh, entered an area ID there and it's being used as the preview expression, it doesn't seem to update immediately. Like even if I tab away, uh, that's not updated. But if I click on another item, in select another item, it is then updated. So um, uh, it can look as if you haven't successfully updated the area ID when I think you ha in fact you have. Um, so anyway, that just confused me a little bit. But anyway, now I sort them again, and it does look like we've got um, IDs for each of those areas. Um, so uh, that looks pretty good. Um, so I would now turn off editing of that layer and save the changes to those polygons. Okay, and now we can save this as uh, save it as a shapefile with uh, Obra Buyer and with IDs. So, it creates as usual with saving a shapefile, creates a new layer. Um, so, um, I'm just going to close QGIS now and talk a little bit about um, how we might do some manipulation of the IDs on the command line. Um, so, I'll close that without saving. Um, so, in this terminal, the ones we just saved were, oops, I must have saved this in completely the wrong place. Okay, I accidentally saved them into the, my home directory rather than here, so um, I'll just move those shapefiles there. Um, IDs. Okay, so uh, there's two tools I want to talk about quickly here. One is um, OGR Info. Um, this is in the GDAL bin package on um, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Um, so this is very useful as a way of showing you on the command line what information is within an Esri shape file. So uh, if I look at the one we just saved over and bind with IDs, SHP, put that to less. Uh, you can see it tells you useful things like the uh, coordinate system in use, uh, all the fields that are present in the file and their widths, um, and here you can see the area ID, the one we just created, as well as the raw uh, coordinate data. Um, so this this is a, a, a very useful tool for checking that you have created, in fact, the data that you actually wanted to create. Um, so that's one useful thing to use. The other thing I thought I'd mention is OGR to OGR, which is an amazing kind of Swiss Army knife of um, uh, from manipulating shape files um, or converting uh, boundary data from one format to another. Um, so suppose in this case we wanted to create a slightly different form of ID based on the area ID, um, then uh, we can do that with OGR to OGR. So here's a here's a command I've more or less prepared um, earlier. Um, the way this works when you're trying to add IDs, you can do that by basically adding an SQL expression, um, which will tell it the select clause will basically say here are the, uh, the the fields that I want in the new shapefile we're generating. Um, so to go through these parameters one by one, sorry, and I th yeah, and I think that makes sense because like lots of um, GIS data is essentially tabular. It's kind of tabular data which relates to particular features in the on a map. Um, so here we specify the dialect, this is the SQL dialect to use. I'm using SQLite because it's nice and well documented. Um, I'm not totally sure um, about what the default is. Um, otherwise, um, dash F Esri shapefile says to generate an Esri shapefile as the output file format, which is almost always what we want. Um, uh, this is the uh, uh, output file, which I'm going to call 
added my bind with new ID, say. And the input file is the one we just saved over a bind with IDs. SHP. Like most command line tools, uh, even though a, sh a shape file is made up of multiple different files, you usually specify the .shp as the file to, um, as, a, as a command line parameter. And then the SQL expression we're using here, um, so uh, the table name here is the feature name that you might see in um, OGR info al as we saw before. Um, the columns that we're selecting, uh, the star at the end just says include all the existing columns as well, essentially. Um, and this expression here is the new ID that we're creating. Uh, it's called msfb. Um, in this case, the double pipe is the SQLite uh, string concatenation operator in these expressions. Um, and what we're taking here is the area ID, um, casting it as varchar3, so basically turning that into a string and adding using that as a suffix on uh, land tag cons for constituency, by for byron dash, and then the id. Um, so you can use quite complex expressions in this select clause. So for instance, if you want to pad with zeros as well, that's, that's quite possible to do with um, a substra going from the right. Um, so, But in this case, hopefully this uh, command will work. Let's give it a go. Um, ah, I've given this actually the wrong table name here, this is my previous example. So yes, I think this needs to match um, the table name, is basically the uh, leaf name of the shapefile. So let's hope that works. Okay, so there's no error, so hopefully that's alright. So if I look at the new file we've generated there, Ober Bayern uh, with new IDs. Uh, you can see now, as well as the area ID here, we also have the msfb ID, which has this prefix that we expect there. Um, and hopefully there should be one for each of those features in the file. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, so uh, hopefully most of the times when you're dealing with boundary data from some random source, it will be have a, a, a useful ID, and you can use OGR to OGR to uh, rename it to a field value we want, um, or manipulate it in the various ways I've mentioned. Um, but in other cases you might need to use QGIS as in the first bit of the screencast to add IDs yourself from some other source of ground truth.